Hello there and thank you for watching this short video on making a Japanese garden for your yard or garden. Something that a lot of people want to do and they are beautiful, peaceful spaces and the great news is if you haven't got a lot of space you can think small and peaceful at the same time. Because when you create a Japanese garden you don't have to think big. Japanese gardens are nature in miniature and that means they look absolutely wonderful if they're built on a small scale. They are minimalist by nature and they're very peaceful and spiritual a great place for you to relax in. So there's a couple of good reasons there for why you should think about having one. Now you could be very innovative and creative because a popular type of Japanese garden involves the copying of real landscapes. So you might have some hills or mountains near you that you think, yeah, I really like the way that they look and I'd like to incorporate them in my garden. And you can do that by using stones or larger rocks that give the impression of hills or mountains. Water, a lot of people like water in a garden. A pond is fine, but you can't have a rectangular, rectangular pond because they don't exist in nature. So you've got to have a pond area in a Japanese garden that looks natural. Nothing in a Japanese garden uh, does not embrace nature. Um, streams are very very popular whether they're dry or wet and you can build a dry stream using uh, small rocks pebbles if you want a lot of people like to have the sound of running water you might need a pump for that but um, if you've got the sort of place where you could have a natural stream and build a little Japanese garden around it that would be absolutely fantastic a lot of people like pagodas they're made of stone Maybe Japanese lanterns that catch the snow beautifully in the winter. If you live in a part of the world where it snows a lot, they look stunning. They're usually made of granite or limestone. They come in uh, several different sort of designs. and um, They're made uh, beautifully and hand carved. And they are expensive, but you can sometimes really pick up bargains as well from your local garden centres. Um, maybe... Uh, a yard sale, something like that, but um, they're, they're certainly something that people would like in a garden. Have a think about whether you would like your garden is going to be in a flat area or a hilly area. Flat signifies calmness in a Japanese garden, which is why there is a, a type of Japanese garden called a flat garden. Hills give the garden a feeling of flow from top to bottom or bottom to uh, top, as it were. And it's worth, you know, trying to sit down and sketch your garden, A4 piece of paper, pencil, rubber, and just sort of draw out the area that you've got in mind. And what would you put where? Where would you put the trees? Where would you put your shrubs? Where would you put your water feature, whether it be wet water or dry water? Because in a Japanese garden, dry water is signified by gravel. Or if you live in a very, very dry climate, you can use something like silver sand or um, a similar type of sand but if you live in a damp area I wouldn't bother I'd stick to gravel and it comes in different sizes too. Include rocks it's a must do really they are a signature of Japanese gardens whether it be a Zen style garden sometimes known as a Japanese rock garden where you see an expanse of gravel that, that is um, got swirl patterns in it with uh, rocks and moss that is a Zen garden they have a, a lot of spiritual meaning and a, an awful lot of history and you can include them in a, a more regular Japanese garden and have your trees and shrubs around them and maybe a little water feature. Uh, and they really look stunning. And at the start of uh, this video, you saw a good example of that with an old Japanese style bridge going over what looks like a dry riverbed made of pebbles. Uh, really effective and it looks very, very nice. And you don't need a big area to do it. A lot of designers of Japanese gardens use rocks as a centerpiece of the garden. They ensure a good energy flow. That is the belief of the Japanese and that's why they come in different sizes. Usually you will see the larger one, in, the largest rock in the center of the garden and the others arranged around it. Water is fantastic in a Japanese garden, whether dry or wet, and is something I think you should do. But less is more. That's the golden rule of Japanese gardens. You mustn't overclutter your ingredients, otherwise it just won't look right and it certainly won't be peaceful and calm. Use any plants and shrubs that you need sparingly. And if you'd like to get lots of ideas, actual plans that you can um, modify and copy 
and lots of tips for your own Japanese garden space at home for your yard or garden, then grab a copy of our free book. You can't click on the link there, but it's called 11 Simple Ways to Turn Your Garden Japanese. And the book looks like that. It is available on Amazon Kindle. It's available in paperback as well, but you can get a downloadable free copy and you won't be disappointed. It's put together by myself with the help of a garden designer called Tim Sykes and includes real examples of building a Japanese garden and lots and lots of tips and advice and it's totally free and as an added bonus when you sign up and get the book you will also be receiving our free Japanese garden newsletter that is called the Japanese Garden Bulletin that's got lots more ideas, inspiration and fascinating facts about Japanese gardens, their history, what they are, how you can adapt that information to your own beautiful garden space at home. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget, download the book www.turnyourgardenjapanese.com www.turnyourgardenjapanese.com I hope you enjoy the book. Thank you for watching the video and good luck with your Japanese garden. I'm sure it will look beautiful.